Hoofprints on My Heart by Mitzi Tate Zeller. Without the love and support of my parents, the farm, the horses, and the stories within these pages may not have come to pass. Therefore, with my sincere love and appreciation for making all of this possible, this one is for you, Mom and Dad. Love, Mitzi. Many thanks are due to you, my wonderful husband, Darren, for your help to do chores and feed the horses, your love and encouragement, and for believing in me and my wild, crazy dreams. To my son, Mylon, thank you, sweetheart, for bringing me tissues with hugs and kisses and for telling me it'll be all right, Mom. Just keep writing. When I wrote the emotional stories in my book, I love and appreciate you both so much. Thank you to my hunter girl for coming to the barn to do some emotional healing with me and the horses. I love you and need you in my life. I would like to extend special thanks to all my family and friends for sharing the experiences in this book with me. I'm so grateful for each one of you and what you have brought into my life. Thank you to the following horse friends whom I have yet to meet in person for reading my first draft, giving me their honest opinion on my story and assisting me with the first edit. Sandra Rowe, Annie Lapierre, and Ed Reed. Cover photo was taken by my friend Sheila Steinley. Thanks, Sheila, for making this awesome photo of me and Destry. Thank you, Mom, for taking so many pictures for us to remember all the good times over the years. And don't test Cecilia for having some of the important photos for my book. Also, huge thanks to Chantal Wall for providing many of the recent photos that are also included within these pages. I met God in church, but developed my relationship with him while I was in the company of horses. God has always been with me. Thank you, Lord, for sending guardian angels to watch over me, my family, and friends during all of the times we were together with horses, and for the wonderful family, friends, and horses you have blessed me with to enrich my life and make it all worthwhile. My mom tells me, that I noticed and started indicating that I liked horses before I could even really speak. By age two, I had developed a great sense of what a horse was and that I liked them a lot. I loved the look of horses and my parents made sure that they fed my desires with horse toys of every shape and size. You see, at the time, we lived in the city even though my dad was farm raised. My mom watched every horse movie with me that there was because my mom loved horses too. On every birthday photo of me from the time I turned two, there are horse toys in each photo. Each summer, my parents would take me to the local fair, and we would always have to tour the horse barns and see all of the horses. I remember once when we were at the fair, I begged my mom and dad to ask someone if I could sit on their horse. My parents loved me, of course, and found someone who obviously understood my great need to sit on a horse, and allowed my parents to set me on their quiet, well-trained show horse. It was one of those heavenly moments in a young horse crazy girl's life. Before I turned four, I was blessed with a little brother to love and help mom take care of and later torment. Or was it the other way around? As he grew older, I had someone else to play horse with. I engaged everyone, family and friends, to play with horses with me and rode several spring horses to their demise. I never was big into dolls or tea parties. The dolls got set aside unless they were capable of riding or taking care of the horses. In my photo album is the first photo of me taken on a horse, sitting in front of my dad on my grandpa Tate's horse, the last horse to be on the Tate farm near Grand Valley, Ontario. I treasure that photo. It makes my heart smile. And I am thankful for that big, beautiful white horse that was so patient to allow my dad to double me on her. The date on the photo is December 1976. When I was nine, we went to northern Alberta, deep in the pine trees, to visit my aunt and uncle. My cousin John had horses, and he took me riding while we were there. He let me ride his well-broke black mare, Dusty, and he rode this little bay gelding named Toby, with the only saddle they owned because Toby wasn't well trained yet. John and I rode the horses to the far end of the open field across the road from their farm. I hadn't ridden by myself before and kept slipping off Dusty's back and down her side. She was a wonderful horse and must have known she had to take care of me because she would slow down so I could regain my seat every time I slipped. 
We were loping the horses by the time we got to the end of the field, and when we rode into the deep grass and tree undergrowth, I slipped off Dusty once again. This time, however, I slipped right off and ended up directly in front of her on my back. With the momentum of the lope, Dusty was unable to stop immediately, and her one front foot landed directly on the middle of my forehead. I don't know how she did it, but that mare shifted her weight and went right over top of me without stepping on me again. Dusty should have squashed my head like a melon. Perhaps the ground was soft beneath my head, and she didn't. I was left with a hoof print on my forehead, and I remember later that evening marveling in the mirror at the perfect hoof print impression on my forehead. I had no headache, and the hoof print was gone by morning. It was my first recollection of a horse that took care of me in spite of the odds, and I was branded for life. It could not and would not deter me from my pursuit and love of horses. In the fall of 1978, my parents purchased a picturesque little farm south of the city, right by the Swiftcurrent Creek, and we moved to an actual farm. It was just 22 acres with a house and a pathetic version of a lean-to shed on it. There were no barns or livestock f facilities at the time of purchase. It was the beginning of a life spent with horses. The story you are about to read is true and is my life of sorts, up to and including this point, and our horses and family are the focal point and the greatest source of inspiration and more to me. I shared my horses and experiences with my family and friends, and they are part of this story too. There are countless people that I took riding over the years. They recall the rides I took them on, fondly and with clarity, whilst I only remember some. To find a great horse story, one to keep you engaged for hours is difficult. I have a collection of horse books, and there are a select few that get taken off the shelf to be read once again. I have read hundreds of horse books over the years, books of great entertainment value, and many that taught me more things about horses. I am always learning. I have many of my own horse stories, ones that I lived. Horses have been in my life for more than 30 years and continue to be my inspiration and stress relievers in today's crazy world. Some of the chapters will make you laugh and some will make you cry. But my hope is that you will feel the love and see the inspiring qualities of the horses that have left hoof prints on my heart.